Hello and welcome back to the Fummins build. If you saw the last episode, you saw that we finally got to drive this thing around fully sorted with all the front end stuff, the cooling stuff, the radiator, the intercooler, all that jazz. And we get to drive around, make boosts, all that stuff. Uh, it was a re really exciting moment, uh, you know, to be driving this truck around like essentially complete. But we have one problem, and that problem is our turbo oil drain. It has been quite the nuisance. Uh, no matter what I've tried, it hasn't stopped leaking. And I've, I've done plenty of oil drains, plenty of different ways, gasket wise, never had this issue. Uh, so basically what we're doing is we're just gonna convert that to an A and line. Uh, that way the piece that bolts to the turbo, which is what's leaking, will have an O-ring instead of a stupid paper gasket. Uh, so while we're waiting on that, we do have more work to do to get this thing ready because I wanna drive it and like really put it through its paces. I wanna take it on the highway, take it for a long drive and, and really see how it is with the trailer, tow the trailer with it, all that stuff. And I'd like to do that while it's stock before we throw a tune on it, um, just to, cause it'll be kind of fun to compare bone stock swapped Cummins versus uh, tuned Cummins, especially with custom tuning. Uh, so one of the big things I wanna do is get it set up and ready for the trailer. So we've got hauled our parts bin back here. So this has kind of been the uh, parts department. When you're doing a swap, you never know what you're gonna need from one truck and from your current truck. You know, you might think you're gonna use this from this truck or this from this engine and you need this from this truck. And anyway, moral of the story is I kept all this stuff back here and I've been kind of picking through it when I need stuff. We need to get it out of here because one, it's annoying to have all this crap bouncing around back here. But two, the big reason is we need to get our gooseneck hitch in. So I decided to go with the uh, nice gooseneck hitch that I wanted to get for all my other trucks, but I knew that my other trucks wouldn't be sticking around, so it was hard for me to justify it, so I never ended up buying one for them. But this truck's getting uh, preferential treatment. We got her a nice gooseneck hitch. I mean, it really should be the end all be all truck for me. It's like everything I want in a truck. It's a nice, modern, reliable, efficient, easy to work on key. Cummins engine in a nice Ford chassis with a stout Ford transmission. And if the transmission does go bad, they are super cheap to replace because these trucks, the motors blow up far before the transmissions have issues. So at its core, this truck is like everything I want in a truck, specifically a tow rig. And then, you know, I want to just do everything I want to do to it and not skimp out anywhere. So anyway, we got to get that gooseneck kitchen so we can go hook up to the trailer and see how that all pans out for us. So first order of business is going and dumping our parts bin into our other parts truck and uh, getting it out of our hair. I think I've got the hood shut in mint. We'll see, usually there ends up being something in the way. Now, we got it. It's always weird getting in this thing and driving it. Look at that freaking rear view cam. Makes me so happy. something, I don't know. Not having my other mirror folded out makes life tricky. As you can see, we already have quite a bit back here. Drive shafts, exhaust, front bumper, core support that I had to cut out. Not too much, we used most of the stuff. So now we can probably sell these. Definitely the radiator. I just wanna make sure before I get rid of the red that uh, I have everything right in the truck because these trucks like the crack radiator tanks. Coming fuel filter housing. All right, all we have left in here is our fuel tank skid plate, which I need to put back on. A couple couplers, some bolts, different wiring harness for the aftermarket pump, positive cable, negative cable, fender liner, which we need. Radiator hose, which we might need one day. All right, got all the stuff out that needs to go in there.
Holy shit! Ha! Look at this! Now I fold back out. Oh, buddy! We got power fold mirrors, dude! That is so sick! They don't do the power extend, though. Power out the tow. So I've got a truck. I found a, uh, like, fully loaded truck. I already forgot what I have to do to make this go in. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. It makes me happy. That's part of, you know, one of the big reasons to get in this truck and building this truck is to have a nice new truck, you know, built-in trailer brake control or comfortable, quiet inside, all those things. Uh, so anyway, uh, enough chipper jabber and uh, I'm gonna get the rest of this crap out of the bed so we can start getting this gooseneck installed. So this is an example of why you should not use plastic bed liners. You can't see up here, but I saw this from underneath. Basically it's rusted at the header board. Uh, you can kind of see how there's a gap there. Um, so we got to fix that. And then we have a rust hole here and some rust back in this area where the water collects. So the problem with the plastic bed liners is water collects under them and doesn't disperse. And then it just sits there and rust away. This truck, 100% spotless underneath. Like there is not a speck of rust on the rest of the truck, frame or body, not a speck. Um, so this is all 100% from the bed liner. Yeah, so that's why we're taking it out. We'll fix up the bed and then get it like rhino lined or something. Uh, but for now, get it out, do our hitch, worry about all that stuff first. Do need to get in here and pressure wash it too because stuff's like baked in there. But I mean, all this stuff was trapped under there. That's all stuff that was just trapped under the bed liner. So if you have a plastic bed liner, take it out. All right, so I've got a quick uh, life working on a car lesson for you guys. Never be sure of the cause of the problem. I was convinced that it was the drain that was leaking because when I put this back together, I put a stock gasket there and I didn't RTV it. Most people RTV it. I, I don't like RTVing stuff if it's not RTVed from the factory. I didn't, I was a little concerned it might leak. So when we had a leak there, I assumed it was the drain and this whole time I've been chasing my tail convinced that it was the drain and coming up with reasons why the drain would still be leaking. So in the last video I got a comment and said you know are you sure it's not the feed that's leaking and it's running down the side of the servo and I was like you know I mean that would make more sense because I wouldn't think the drain could leak this bad because it's not really under pressure you know it, it kind of seems logical but I definitely checked the feed before so I crawl up here I look you know, and the, the fitting where it goes into the turbo is dry, the top of the turbo is dry. You know, I, I checked it, it was still tight. I was like, yeah, man, it doesn't seem like it's it. I wish it was that easy, but I was like, you know, I'm not gonna give up yet. I didn't do a great job checking this the first time. So let's start the truck up. So I start the truck up, still don't see any leak. Looking around, I feel my hand under the line, boom, a little dripping on my hand. The line where it goes from metal and it's crimped onto the stainless braided line there was cracked and it was leaking from the bottom. So it was almost bypassing the turbo. It wasn't landing on the top of the turbo, it was landing on the side and running down. So anyway, the uh, lesson here is never be so sure of uh, what the problem is and always kind of take a second look at things. And if you are, when you do check other stuff, even if you don't think that's what the problem is, check it thoroughly. You know, if I had checked that more thoroughly in a way I would have if I thought it was the problem, I probably would have found it in the first place. But the nice thing though is we've got another line coming. It'll be here tomorrow. We can put that on. Hopefully our drain is sealed this time and uh, we can move on with our lives. But uh, yeah, it's honestly pretty cool though because to me, it's just the power of YouTube. You know, a comment saved me a ton of time because it's the feed. It's definitely the feed that's causing the majority of the leak at a bare minimum. So it might be the whole week. It might only be part of it, but it is leaking and we are going to fix it uh, thanks to a YouTube comment. So such a cool thing, the YouTube community. I don't know. I, I get excited by it. So anyway, lesson learned at my expense. Uh, Hopefully you guys take something from it and uh, it helps you out down the road. But anyway, while we wait on that line to get here, it's time to move on to the gooseneck hitch.
But here it is all out of the box. This is honestly a really nice uh, setup. They're the only ones that I found that make this kind of setup, but it's cool. They got this really nice instruction booklet. Uh, it tells you a bunch of stuff, good instructions. The actual ball itself is like billet machined, which is pretty nice. Uh, I definitely think it's worth it. So we're measuring now for our hole. Now we need a four inch circle. Okay, we need a four inch hole saw. This is only a three and a half, but this is about the right size for it. Uh, so basically what I'm gonna do is use this and then just kind of open it up with a carbide burr. That way we know we get her centered. We'll try that. To say this has been easy so far would uh, be a gross misrepresentation. <laughs> oh man, all right. Uh, see if you can kind of see, understand what I'm talking about. So basically I had to slide that angle in from the other side. I had to notch this part of the bed here, the pinch wall basically. And then it's got notches on it and you have to like rotate it over the shock mount, which long story of how complicated that was, but then I had to take the shock off, finally got it over, and then had to hammer it. It's been, it's been a bit of a struggle, but now that we got that piece in, the front should hopefully go in a little easier. And then it seems like, I don't know, I don't even wanna say, whereas like the rest of it will be easier because then it won't. <laughs> Base probably covered in dirt, but we're gonna get back to work. We're gonna get this front one in, and then I think from there we start putting these side plates on and then our center guy in. So that's it hanging on the chain. Ta-da! All right, got the center section in. Devised this uh, chain method to, uh, it's, it's not needed now because I got the bolts in, but to basically just to hold it up in place while I got the bolts into the pieces of angle. But yeah, anyway, it's in. Looks nice. Very unintrusive. You can barely tell it's there, but this has been quite the project. Oh, You got these side plates and then the pieces of angle there and there. Those are the hardest to get in. And then getting the center section in required dropping the exhaust down, I'll show you. I had to pull it out of the joint here and then drop it down to get that center section up and over it. And we will have to space it down. It comes with a bracket for that. But anyway, now we just gotta tighten all the hardware for it and uh, finish putting the little last little pieces on. All right, it's officially in and mounted. A lot of work, but very satisfying to see just that little puck deal set up there instead of a big giant spider looking thing with rails and all this crap to uh, mount it. Much sleeker. I gotta put this on. This is the little pull handle that pulls the pin that holds the ball in. So when you want to flip it upside down, you reach under there, pull it, it locks up, put it in, pow, boom, it's in upside down. And then our safety chain hookups, which are just these U-bolts and they have like a they have these little springs, so they'll spring down and when you, you have to pull them up, pop the chain on, whatever. Uh, so I gotta do that and then we gotta put exhaust back on with this lowering bracket and the other thing, shock, put the shock back on. Done. All right, so we got our lever down here, this guy. Pull it back, twist it, it locks out. We take our ball. So this is why this is a turnover ball because we can put it upside down. How would you get it out? Oh, I see. So we can put it upside down, so it's flush. Boom, I'm just 
gotta go walk it in. There she is, boys. And our safety chains, pull that up, clip. Springs back down. Sweet. Stoked on it. Definitely a good bit of work, but not too bad. All right, we got our new uh, high pressure hose in. I would have preferred to buy an OEM one of these, but uh, it, there wasn't there wasn't enough time. I needed to get one and get it back on the truck. So here we have it. New line is in. We're gonna see. She still gives us the leaky leaks <laughs> or not. I mean, it should definitely be leaking less at a minimum. It was 100% leaking from that line. Whether or not it's leaking from the drain, we'll find out. Hell yeah, I wish I would have figured this out before I put another stock gasket on and I wouldn't have RTV there. I hate I hate using RTV when I don't have to. But she's running good, boys. She's running good. It's like the right amount of loud because it has like a straight through muffler. Quiets it down enough to not be obnoxious. Oh no, my rear camera's wigging out. I gotta figure that out. That's my favorite part. Bad timing to do this, apparently. Now that uh, we're not pouring oil out, I'm gonna let it warm up to uh, operating temp and uh, just kind of see how everything does once it's warmed up, see if the fan comes on, all that kind of stuff. It's hot here, we need to get the AC working in this thing. Also need to re-bleed the brakes. to put like some sound deadening up on the train tunnel because you hear some ah sorry I dropped you guys you hear some engine noise like very clearly it just sounds like there's no padding there so I basically gotta raise this up. You see how it's got the holes? Um, it was all the way down for that uh, white dually 7.3 truck I had. I gotta get the other wrench. And it was all the way down because that truck sat really low. Uh, so anyway, we're gonna raise it up and see where it needs to be for this truck. It's cool to see this thing hooked up to the big trailer. The big trailer needs a bath and some TLC. She's been sitting out here for a while. Hasn't been used because we've been building the truck. We haven't had a truck to pull it with. I do like, man, part of me really wants to try to pull the trailer out with the truck, but I'm smart enough to know I shouldn't do that yet. We need to do the kind of mandatory trans tuning for the swap. So basically we gotta download the trans tune send it to diesel conversion specialist. Their tuner there will then write us a custom tune for the trans so that everything works. Because we're using a Ford trans and it's seeing some inputs off the Cummins engine and, and it's like basically it needs a custom tune for it to understand what to do and when to do it, more or less. So anyway, uh, as much as I want to pull this thing out, I don't, I don't want to risk messing anything up by doing so. So we're going to go work on that stuff. We're going to try to get the AC working, download the trans tune file, get that sent out, maybe give her a bath because she is quite dirty. Could use a good pressure washing, but it looks cool. Hooked up to the trailer. Once we've got the, some shakedown miles on the truck, we at least know she's ready to go. All right, it's hot. Let's bring this thing back up to the shop. All right, I'm just letting it idle, letting everything get up to temperature. Kind of going through and checking. I want to make sure like the fan clutch is going to come on. I want to make sure the cooling system's bled. Just checking stuff with the heat gun. Oil temp is 173. You can see like charge temp into the intercooler, out of the intercooler. Just checking everything over. Got everything hooked up to go ahead and try to vacuum out the AC system and see where we stand. Make sure that it actually holds vacuum. If it does, 
We'll try to add some refrigerant. Maybe we can get the AC working. That would be exciting. I'm a little nervous. I welded the AC line, so like definitely failure point possibility. Uh, hoping that we're all good. I'm hoping. Fingers crossed. Keep them crossed for me. <laughs> Let's get to it. So far, so good. Need probably a little more, but pressures are holding steady. Oh, and the AC is icy. Nice and cold. Oh yeah, there we go, dude. I'm a little worried that we'll have a week and this will be short-lived, but it is definitely ice cold right now. Like I said, I think it needs a, just a little more, like another half can of Freon to be topped off, but it works. Check, see if we can hear any leaks. I vacuumed it out. I, it held vacuum. I'm impatient, so I only let it hold vacuum for like five minutes. This system had uh, dye in it, so if it's gonna leak, well, at least see the dye. I mean, it appears to be good. That's incredible. That makes me really happy. I do have one more can of Freon, but these stupid self-sealing cans, like I get it, and I, I, I think it, they need a valve for sure, um, but like this one, the valve's messed up, so it's just useless. Like I, I bought it like that. Like I bought it, I tried to use it, it was useless. You can't get the thing to open it. It's really tricky to tell if you're actually, like if it's actually sucking anything in or not, the way that little valve works. Super annoying. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we got AC now. I mean, fingers crossed it lasts a long time and doesn't have leaks, uh, but you know, time will tell on that end. Like I said, add another can of Freon just to really get her where she's supposed to be. But I was worried that these were gonna leak if anything, but seemed to be good. And then it wasn't getting too hot. The fan, um, it's like an electronically controlled clutch fan. And when the pressure started going up, uh, the clutch fan started freaking ripping. So that's all working good from the factory forward side of things, like telling it, hey, turn the fan on harder. You know, we need more air flowing through the condenser to cool it down because the pressures are getting too high. So, that, I mean, that's good. All went well. I was a bit, a bit panicky because this is the gauge set we have. And uh, see, it's still holding pressure. Um, basically it like filled up the line and then just stopped and I was like man is there a blockage in the system like what the heck's going on um, and then I realized that like just nothing was coming out of this fitting into the system so I went and rented these gauges and uh, we got her working but yeah anyway I had enough talking I've been talking for three and a half minutes about this I'm just excited I'm still nervous you know it's like with the truck build right like it's running it's driving I could go drive this thing right now which I have uh, but I'm still nervous. I I'm gonna be nervous about it and worried that something's gonna happen until we've like put two, 3,000 miles on this thing and it hasn't let us down. I mean, it probably will at some point, but you know what I mean. Two, 3,000 miles, know that it's sorted, then I'll be like, okay, it's done. Um, and again, we, we gotta do cosmetic stuff. Front bumper, rear bumper, semi wheels, headlights, things like that. Interior stuff, fixing that other seat over there and whatever, but Hey man, runs and drives and has AC now and has a freaking gooseneck. Freaking gooseneck, it's raining again. Oh, Florida. All right, I got all the trans info sent over to DCS, diesel conversion specialist, to send me the custom tune. Uh, so aside from aesthetics, and obviously barring any complications, there, the only thing, we, we do have a couple little things left. Uh, just small stuff I gotta work on in my spare time. One, I need to modify this fan shroud. So we have the top. But this basically like went over all of that and like the top covers our fan. We're good there, but the bottom, the fan is kind of exposed. So to make it work as efficiently as possible, we need to kind of build a removable bottom bolt-on shroud piece. I need to do that. Super, should be simple. Thing number two, back here, I need to move my lift pump forward because you can see my e-brake cable, that's not even hooked up. So when it's hooked up, it's gonna be hitting them. So I can slide it forward. I don't know, probably four or five inches, which should be plenty. That should get me where I need to be. Uh, and then we can hook the e-brake cable up down there. I do need to go and fully torque the cab bolts. I got them all tight, but I was waiting to go through and, and do the final torque until this thing was running and driving, just in case we had to pull it back off. 
I don't know, I'm kind of superstitious like that, I guess. I, I'm afraid that like if I do something like that, then I, I don't know, then I'll have an issue and have to take it apart, but if I don't do it, then I won't, I don't know. Anyway, uh, fender liner needs to go back in. I forgot about this. Yeah, need to put that back in. That was out for the oil drain, which we have since resolved. So, I mean, I'm, dude, I'm super happy with everything. We got, we've made some big progress on this thing. So I'm gonna back it out of the shop with the AC on. Uh, Ben's gotta get his car out because we were both going to a drift event tomorrow. Got my car loaded up on the trailer, ready to go. I really wanted to take this truck as like a trial run, um, but one, I need to finish those two things. Two, it's not registered. I gotta go register it during the week. So taking the old Will Green, uh, Will Green Ripper. <laughs> That's a good truck, man. That thing's got a 6.0 and a 4L80 in it, so it, it gets down, it tows great. Uh, but I am very excited to be towing with this thing. It's gonna be so much more comfortable, so much roomier, so much fancier, so much more powerful. Like, I'm so stoked, man. Oh, I'm stoked. I, I'm so happy with this truck. I can't wait to, to be sure it's sorted mechanically and do the aesthetic stuff, the semi wheels with off-road tires, the bumpers, and you guys get the idea. A lot of me talking, I apologize. I'm just excited, all right? I'm excited. Just leave me be, just let me be excited, all right? <laughs> Let's back this thing out of the shop. Oh, you know, just about to back my Bummins out with the AC on. It's like a cold first, you know, we can't be straining ourselves back now when it's not cold yet. I heard your camera's like broken. I got a freaking maze to back there today. said the engine is really really loud like right here it's probably because it's so close to the firewall and they didn't like sound deaden it there it, it sounds like it's playing through the radio the same boat definitely we need a sub it's on the list With sub better back. door speaker basically full sound system besides the head unit the head unit is decent watch well the sun is shining i can't wonder i just hope i never find a mama this is so cool so cool like being able to sit here and let this thing idle with the ac on. oh man i probably pause this so i can actually not get copyrighted but oh like idle and ac on lights on it's like a freaking stock truck it's crazy Just like, you know, obviously that's what the goal was when I built it, to make it like a freaking stock truck. Do stock truck things. That is so sick. That is so sick. So I know all of those things that I'm excited about may sound kind of silly. You're like, I mean, that's what a stock car is supposed to do, right? That's what that's what my car does. My car, the AC works and my Bluetooth works. I can leave it idle and I can have the lights on. You know, it, it sounds so silly, but the thing is when it comes to swapping a vehicle, it is really pretty easy to swap a race car. You know, doing the LS Miata build, that, that was a pretty extreme version because you have to like do all this modification to the engine bay and it still really wasn't that bad because I mean, you're stripping all the unnecessary stuff out. You know, you're rewiring it back to the basics. You only need a handful of things. You're eliminating a bunch of stuff off the engine. I mean, you just, it's so simple. They're very simple to build, you know, in every single way. Whereas building something like this, like it's so much harder to build something to function like an OEM vehicle, you know, to have everything work as it should. That is really hard. I, I kind of did it with the Subaru, you know, keeping AC and all the interior and, and trying to keep all the stock vehicle functions. But this is like the next level up from that even, you know, because it's going to be a tow rig and it needs to be reliable and everything needs to work. And, you know, half of the point of doing this build in this swap was to have a nice new modern comfortable truck that was like hopping in a new truck uh but with with the simplicity of the cummins engine and 
I don't know, to, to have it sitting there idling with the lights on, playing music from my phone on the Bluetooth, the AC blowing ice cold and it's idling and the fans working and like everything working together in unison, like it would on a stock vehicle, but power folding the mirrors in as I drive it. Like, again, it sounds so silly, but it just, I don't know. I'm so excited about it. Like that's like really the reality of like, it's really come together and I'm sure there's, there's, there is more to do. You know, I have a few things that I need to knock out coming up soon, but I mean, basically my plan is as soon as uh, DMVs open back up, which should, hopefully they're already open. Anyway, as soon as I can, uh, which the next day or two, I'm gonna go to the DMV, I'm gonna register it, uh, knock out those last few little things and then start putting some miles on it, start driving it, start trying to work out any bugs that may arise that way we're ready to really tow with it. And then, you know, the big hang up, we need to do the trans tuning, which that should go okay. I mean, I shouldn't say that, but the, the engine tuning, I've got to figure out what to do with that. Basically, we can force, tune, force the tune onto the ECU, but there's a possibility that it'll break the ECU. And if it does, they're like seven, $800 prefer not to do that so either i've got to figure out why it won't let us download or upload the tune um but we got we'll get to that definitely want to get this thing tuned though before i tow with it because it's a night and day difference for us bone stock cummins to like a, a moderately tuned cummins so i definitely want to get that handled before i tow the big trailer but anyway moral of the story is got a few things to do gonna register it gonna start putting some miles on it that's that's how we're gonna really find the issues and that's how we're gonna work through them and that's how we're gonna trust this thing trust is a big thing take some time take some miles before i trust a truck takes me honestly a long time to trust a tow rig because a tow rig if you break down like it's a it's an ordeal you know especially with the big trailer you've got a 36 foot gooseneck trailer with your pride and joy car in it and tools and parts and wheels and tires and you've got a truck you got to get both of them somewhere both of them home you know like it's a big deal so anyway that's why i've been so kind of like anal about trying to make sure everything's right and and really double checking everything before i do it like the last thing i want to do is screw something up and uh, leave myself stranded so anyway i'm jibber jabbering on i'm just i'm really excited that was a cool feeling uh you know i let it idle for like 15 minutes with the ac on everything was still working <laughs> didn't burn to the ground like uh, again, talking too much. I will see you guys for the next video. Uh, we are going drifting and I've got a really cool project planned with a fellow YouTuber that you guys will probably like. Should be a short little fun project. So see you guys for that as well. But for now, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Goodbye.